Hey, good morning. Ah, oh, man. Um, you know, I'm going to start off by saying this. This is so deep. Ah, the word of God, when he's revealing the higher spiritual truth, the deeper meaning of his word, it's, it's, it, it, it flows, right? It flows as I'm going through it. But for me to try to give it out, I know I sound like a blathering idiot sometimes, always stuttering, pausing, and you know, I, I'm just not a good speaker. That's all there is to it. But if you can stick with this and, and, and glean and glean uh, these, this treasure, these spiritual gift, these spiritual nuggets of truth, basically, um, you know, you, you, you'll get something from it. And, and this, I'm doing this so people will take a deeper study of his word and come to the knowledge of the truth that will help them let go of all the things of this world, basically. And, and we're in the world, but we're not of the world, right? We're, we're here. We're here for a while. Um, and it was a punishment. We're born into death and condemnation. We're not born into life. You're only born into life when you're born again from above by receiving God's Holy Spirit, which only comes into you when you give yourself completely over to his guidance, his leadership, uh, his only begotten son, giving yourself over to Jesus Christ, who is God incarnate, the word that was made flesh, who came here to reveal the truth, not conceal it. Our bodies are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We've all partaken of the fruit of it, the sin, the depravity, um, all that stuff, the selfishness, okay? And our bodies are the image of the beast that speaks to you all day long, that deceives you. You have to take control back of your minds and your hearts, your lusts, passions, desires, emotions. You have to take control of that back from your flesh, from from your car carnal minds, because your flesh will lead you astray. Your flesh is the thief that only comes to steal, kill, and destroy you. Um, you're a spiritual, eternal being that took the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is a rotten, dying, decaying physical form, okay, that only begets suffering, which God did not want us to do, did not want us to experience. He created paradise perfection for us to dwell with him in perfect peace and harmony serving each other serving him living all together in perfection we chose to go our own way we were led astray we were deceived we listened to another voice we took that fruit which is the a progeny of a physical form and you grow up to be a, a sprout you're you're born into a, a baby right a physical form upside down right backwards. You don't know the truth. You've been stupefied, put in a sleep of death, spiritual sleep, separating yourself from God. And, and when you give yourself back to Jesus Christ, when you finally come to your knees, bend your knee, cast your own crown, we made ourselves our own God, our own King. We, we, th these bodies are idol. Look at the word image in Genesis uh, 126. This image, it's, it's, it's a phantom and it's illusion. It's a deception. It's a vain show, especially an idol. We made ourselves our own judges, magistrates. We, we, we judge unrighteously because we don't know all the evidence. Only God does. We can't judge a person by the outward appearance of things or by something that they may do that we don't believe is right, or it may not be right in general, but everybody's going to screw up every now and then. As long as we're in these bodies of flesh, every now and then that flesh is going to rise up like, like it did in Peter, right? When he said, when just before Jesus said, you, you know, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you know, you're, you're the son of the living God. You're a Messiah. And uh, he said, blessed are you. And he named it, his name was Simon Barjon. He, and on this rock, the, you know, he, he named him Petra, like a small piece of stone, like a building block of his church. So Peter was a building block, a building stone of his church, of his body, of his family, right? And, uh, and he said on, on this rock, this larger mass rock on the foundation of what you just said, that I am the Messiah, I'm the son of the living God. Okay. All that, that, you know, blessed are you, Peter, because God revealed this to you because mankind cannot, mankind rejects it. Um, so just a couple verses later, um, he's telling him that he's going to be, uh, unjustly, uh, tried. And, and crucified and be put to death. And Peter said, far be it from you, Lord, I will not let this happen to you. Okay, that was his flesh rising up and speaking through him, right? It, it, in uh, his carnal mind, you know, 
uh, which is full of pride, pride, anger, all these things, right? And then Jesus turned to him after just telling him he was blessed and said, get thee behind me, Satan. So Satan rules you through your flesh, through this covering of flesh. You've been covered over in darkness. You, it's like an encampment. You've been surrounded by your enemy. It's all around you. It's the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It's your own flesh. It's your own body. You, your worst enemy looks you in the mirror every day. It's you. It's yourself. It's your flesh. And Satan rules you through his throne. His throne, his rulership, the way he rules and governs you is through your flesh. And, and it's so subtle. People are completely deceived by it. Uh, we're not born into life. This was a punishment by God. He allowed us, he gave us free will to reap what we sow and, uh, and boy, is that, <laughs> it's happening. And hopefully through all the chastisements of this world, all the pain, the anguish, the sorrow, the suffering, all these things, it will turn back to God and ask for his help, ask for his guidance, turn back to him, start looking up rather than down. Stop looking at all the external things and start, start speaking to God and ask him to reveal himself to us, to tell us the truth, to tell us what life is about, to tell us what happened, why we're here, what's going on, why all the pain, why all the suffering, why all the sin, why all the depravity, all this stuff, and he will reveal himself to you, okay? But he's going to reveal his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who is God incarnate, the word that was made flesh. And uh, once you put your faith and trust and confidence in him, because we were made to doubt him and his word, and we took that fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, birthed into a rotten, dying, decaying physical form, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the abode of light and darkness, good and evil. That's that's what we do, good or evil. Uh, you know, a good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. We're all trees. We're called trees. We're the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Our bodies are, okay? The abode of light and darkness, uh, eternal spiritual being that's covered in over in uh, immortal being that's been covered over immortality, taken captive by it. And if your flesh is leading you through this life, it's going to lead you astray and lead you straight to hell. And before you die physically, this body, you need to turn back to God, beg his forgiveness, put your faith and trust and confidence completely in Jesus Christ who paid the penalty that we could not pay because he was unblemished by this flesh. He was not controlled by it. He was not deceived by it. We are. The deception is so strong. It's the strong delusion. The whole world, your body, your flesh, all that, you, you have to break free from that. And only Christ can do that. He's the only one who can break the seal. Satan's put over you through your flesh, marking you as his own. He rules you through, his, through your flesh. Like we sold ourselves into slavery. We left our first estate. Understand that. And we've been stupefied, like put in a trance. We're living in the matrix. It's a simulation, but not like you think, like a computer simulation. This isn't true life. It's not true reality. And things can change here in an instant. And I'm not going to go into that because uh, you can see it and many, many do. So I'm not even going to get into that. But anyways, this is enough of that blathering. Here we go. Uh, this is Jeremiah 30, verse 17. But I'm going to read some verses before. I'm going to read 14 through 20. And hopefully I can get through it without making too many too much weird noises <laughs> that I noticed I do and, and saying the word okay and right and all these things way too much because I'm not a good speaker, but I hope you can stick with it and get some of these uh, spiritual treasures, these nuggets uh, uh, okay, of truth here. Okay, um, you, you have to take a deeper study of his word, but you got to be led by a spirit. Only a spirit can reveal spiritual things. The, the spiritual meaning of his word. So there's that. And and I'm no better than you. I'm a sinner. My punishment would be just, you know, I, I, I it's a battle every day. Our flesh must be crucified daily, constantly. He came here to show us the truth, to reveal the truth. And it's a battle. Uh, we're to reflect Christ, the character of Christ, not our own. Not to reflect our own earthly, carnal, fleshly nature when we look in the mirror. We're to reflect Jesus Christ. We're to reflect God's glory, his goodness, his love, his mercy, his forgiveness, his tenderness, all that. Okay, so there's that. Um, Jeremiah 30, and here we go, verses 14 through 20. And obviously, I'm going to go over a few words. And uh, I mean, look, this is, this, look at this chicken, all these notes and chicken scratch. I hope I can get through this the way he revealed it to me. So you can understand it a lot better um, from a spiritual perspective because we've lost that in translation. We've lost so much um, because uh, nothing. Okay, God's word, the original scriptures, I believe were perfect. 
you know, and the people at the time that spoke those languages understood what was being said, or I shouldn't say all of them, but a lot of people did understand it and they put their faith in Christ and they even gave their own lives. They died. They died by not renouncing Jesus Christ as their King, as their Lord, as their Messiah. Okay. They died a uh, horrible deaths. Um, I'm not even going to get into it. Some of the worst things that were ever devised by mankind. Uh oh, my dog just came out. I got to shut the door before the cat gets out. Dog, how did you do that? Yeah, she can open the door. It's got a lever handle and this dog can pull that lever handle and pull actually pull the door in so she can go. She's a pretty smart dog. All right. So anyways, <laughs> here we go. Uh, this is Jeremiah 30, verse 14. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Okay, now there's just a couple words. Your These lovers, okay, all thy lovers have forgotten thee. Okay, you know, I'm. did I write down the numbers? Uh, some of them I did, the word forgot. Or is that the word enemy? Anyways, I'm you know I'm not going to go over it. You need to look at these things, and I'm looking at the Thayer, the BDB, the Mounts, and the Strongs, and all these. But the main thing is you have to be led through it by a spirit, like I said. And um, I hope I can get through this. So, anyways, all thy lovers, okay, all who have committed and love this spiritual adultery, which is what we committed, spiritual adultery by loving this world okay are oblivious okay this word forgotten are oblivious to their own state and condition they're oblivious to their own sin they're oblivious to their own state and condition you don't understand what the world is what this is it's it's a punishment by god we're not born into life we're born into death and condemnation separated spiritually from god we've committed this spiritual adultery we've taken this strange flesh we've, we've mingled ourselves together with it and we've been taken captive by it, by its carnal nature of our minds and of our hearts. Okay, so there's that. Okay, they, so all who, who've, who've committed and love this spiritual adultery by loving this world are oblivious to their own sin, their own depravity. They go on in darkness. Okay, they love the darkness rather than the light. They, they have no clue of their own sin. They have no clue what transpired. They have no clue how they got here. They have no clue what the purpose of this world is. They have no clue. They, they just don't know. Okay, so they seek, they not. Okay, um, this phrase is, I believe, 1875. They worship these heathen idols, these uh, heathen gods, these idols. Their idol, heathen means I, like idol worshipers. They worship these idols of flesh, these heathen gods, which are these bodies of flesh. That's what you're putting your trust in. That's what you think is the greatest. You, you know, you do anything to save your own life, right? But in true reality, if you're in Christ, when you die physically, you're released and you get to go home because we've been taken captive by it. Okay. So that's the truth. Like, like Peter, I, or Peter. Or Paul, Paul, it was Paul who uh, wrote that letter I went over a few verses ago. Um, to live is for Christ, to continue to expound on his word and give out the spiritual meaning so people can wake up and come to the knowledge of truth. So to live is for Christ, but to die is gain. I get to go back home and be with my Lord and Master in paradise. So it's gain. It's for my benefit. If I my physical body dies and I get released from it, I get to go back home. It's the truth. Your body's... Uh, you know, the world's a prison. Your body's your prison suit that holds you here, captive. Okay, so it's so crazy that people think it's craziness. And the weird thing is even the churches, man, and it's right there all through his word from the beginning to the end and multiple verses over and over and over and over. It's so crazy. It's like he did not want you to miss this. Okay, so, so that's what they do. I've wounded you with the wound of an enemy, uh, I believe that's uh, 341, with your adversary, which is in your, your own flesh, which is in opposition to God. Uh, the flesh wars against the spirit. It's in opposition to your own spirit and to your own well-being of your soul. So this enemy that is your adversary, that is in opposition to the your own well-being, the own well-being of your soul, okay, it's in opposition. So I've wounded you by this enemy. 
that we've taken for ourselves. We, we made that choice. He gave us free will, which is a beautiful gift. But uh, like, like a immature, ignorant, young child, you, you do what's wrong. You have to teach your child to do what's right. And that's hard to do. Okay. Cause they're naturally going to do what's wrong because it's the nature of their flesh. Okay. With the chastisement of this cruel one, this chastisements of this world, that's, that's like a father punishing his children. That's us. We're all the prodigal sons went astray, threw away our inheritance, squandered it, which was eternal life, peace, living together in harmony. Okay. We threw it away having true life and we took on death basically. His bodies beget death. They beget pain, suffering, anxiety, worry, all these things that he did not want us to experience. He warned us against. We disobeyed him and we took that fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And now we grow up to be a tree of the knowledge of good and evil, a boat of light and darkness. Okay. Okay. With the chastisements of this cruel one, this word cruel one is 394, this deadly ruler, the one who rules over to you that brings death. That's your own body. Okay, it's your own flesh. You Satan rules and deceives you and keeps you blind and lost through the deception of your own flesh and the external things of this world. Okay, for the multitude of your iniquity, because of the greatness of the sin you've committed, because thy sins were increased greatly. Okay, <clears throat> now verse 15. Why criest thou for thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto you. Because your sins were increased. Now, there's so much meaning here. I hope I can get through it. I got a million notes and I hope I can give this out to where you can understand it. But you need to look at it for yourself because unfortunately, it, it, mankind, like you are not going to believe the witness of another, basically, in many, so many things. You have to see it for yourself. Like I said, it's like seeing Bigfoot. Ah, you saw a bear. You were mistaken. You were drunk. You were high. You're on drugs or whatever. You, you thought you saw something, but you didn't. Until you see it for yourself, then then you know. Like I've seen, man, I ain't even going to get it. I've seen some crazy things. I've seen some demonic beings. I've seen <laughs> so many things. Angels, I've seen. I mean, he opens your eyes. He it, and, and look, if you could see into the spiritual world, you would die. You would physically die from fear. There's no doubt about it. But he, he can give you glimpses. And that's what he's done. And, and look, demons reveal their, when I'm in their presence, not always, but occasionally it's happened multiple times throughout my life. Demons just take over the person and say or do something to me or in front of me <clears throat> to mock me, basically. And because uh, they know, because I'm either praying internally spiritually they know I'm, I'm i'm born again spiritually god's holy spirit dwells within me and look you can you can mistake by some of the things i say or do sometimes that oh that guy's not a christian there's no doubt about it we're all in that same boat and and it's a battle daily like i said it's it's any man says he does not sin they're deceiving themselves there you go okay now, we're not held accountable to our sin. We've been set free from the penalty of the Mosaic law. Once you're born again spiritually, you're his. But he convicts you from within, teaches you right from wrong, good from evil, love from hate, all these things, which way to go, which way not to go, what to do, what not to do. And what did Paul say? Uh, the things I should do, I don't, and the things that I the things I should do, I don't, and the things I should not do, that's what I do. What a wretched man am I, right? It's a constant. Like, there's mosquitoes all over here. Uh, so it's been so wet. The weather is absolutely nuts, right? Earth pains, no doubt about it. So why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto you. So I don't know, even know if I should go over the numbers. Why criest thou? It's 2199. Why do you cry to me for help to come unto you and be with you because of your curse this vexation this curse you've been afflicted with um so you can understand why you suffer so much like when you look at his word you have to go to origin to origin because parts of these words are have a, a meaning that was part of a or original word and this is where a lot of things were lost i believe spiritually in translation because nothing says that the the bible this conglomeration of these writings that were put together okay many of this was lost because the men weren't and i'm not going to say they weren't maybe somewhere and somewhere weren't born again spiritually they weren't writing by under the influence of god's holy spirit while they're looking at these scriptures i mean I, 
you know, lost in tribe. We live in Babylon. The languages were confused. There we go. So anyways, <clears throat> so, so you can understand why you suffer so much. Okay. This affliction, this curse, you were vexed. You want me to come unto you and be with you so you can understand why you suffer so much. Okay. This sorrow is incurable. Okay. The word sorrow is 4341 and you have to Okay, look at that to understand it too. Uh, this sorrow, where where did I write that at? Um, anyways, this sorrow, 4341. This sorrow uh, is incurable. This 4341, where? I know I wrote that down, but this uh, pain, grief, all these things. I know I wrote that down somewhere. Anyways, this pain, grief uh, of your flesh is incurable. Okay. Uh, yeah. This pain and grief of your flesh, this physical and mental pain, the physical and man, I'm physically hurting everywhere. I'm getting multiple operations, four operations in the last two, three months, and I've got more to come. And the pain is just increasing, you know, so there's that i mean if it, it it should be obvious this physical and mental pain that our flesh these bodies of flesh bring upon us because we took it right and he told us not to okay your immortal spiritual being that took on mortality we did not listen to god's warnings we we disobeyed him so there's that so now he's punishing us by allowing us to reap what we've sown so we can understand but it's a beautiful thing because he's provided a way back through his only begotten son jesus christ who paid the penalty for our sins that we could not pay okay to reveal the truth to us and show us the way show us the truth and bring us unto eternal life restore us reconcile our relationship back to god uh converting us right mentally physically our minds our hearts our, our desires and lusts okay converting us inside from from a carnal way of thinking to a spiritual way because we're being led now by him giving ourselves casting our crown bending our knee before him okay allowing him to lead and guide us rather than our own physical being our carnal carnal minds okay this uh, desperately wicked okay this incurable which is 605 which is desperately wicked frail and feeble state that we are in okay uh this weakened state and condition that we're in um uh, it's breach this breach incurable for the multitude of sins i don't know if that was for the word sins anyways uh health warning if we did not heed his warning okay i think this is the word sin all about for this multitude of thine iniquity, the greatness of your transgression. So we don't even understand the greatness of our transgression. We disobeyed God right from the get-go. I mean, right, we're born into sin, death, and condemnation. We're born into it, okay? Physically, because we've sinned, we we disobeyed him right from the get-go. What came first, your soul or your body? Your, you know, so there you go. Um of your iniquity we don't even understand the greatness of our own transgression of our own darkness our own sin because thy sins were increased okay now this word sin uh originally you would think it'd be missing the mark missing the goal because we all thought we could become like the most high god miss the mark miss that goal but it's a different word that goes to that word wow these mosquitoes i need to get through this quick because these mosquitoes are chewing me up all right sins were increased we've our punishment these sins our punishment is so great because our transgression was so great this uh man mosquitoes our punishment is so great because our transgression was so great of missing the goal and missing the the mark and this went into a word breach it was found in the bdb that his holy spirit really made stood out and look up the definition of breach look it up in the latin look it up everything it can mean and it went to this word called break it's breach led to me this word break so read it all so this breach meaning going through the waters like piercing through the water like the breach the water right going through the waters and piercing through to the other side that's what we did and the waters are euphemistic for like semen Went through the waters and pierced through to the other side, this world that is in opposition to God. Uh, we have broke his commandments. We disobeyed him. Uh, we did not heed his warning and we fell 
we fell from our place of origin. We fell under the attack of our enemy. So we were overtaken by these bodies of flesh. It said sea break. We have left our place of safe, safety and uh, protection, separating ourselves from God to be birthed into this rotten, dying, decaying physical form, this mortality, this flesh, which has crushed our spirit by this storm of chaos we're surrounded by in this world that we have chosen for ourselves. We were overtaken by the sound, by this voice of another. We we're overtaken by it, by the voice of our own flesh, yeah, you know, basically, which is how Satan rules us. Wow, I can't believe how badly these mosquitoes are out here. Got a bug zapper, got all kinds of things going on, but man, it's crazy. All right, so, so there's that, the word sin. Okay, when you first look it up, I believe it was 2403, and then it goes to another word, which means missing the goal, missing the mark, which is part of it. So that's what we've done. Okay, was increased, and it was so great. I have done these things unto you, basically to, to a good father will, will discipline their child, and that's what he's doing to us, so we could realize our depravity and the error of our ways and our sin. Now, verse 16, therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. Oh, wait, I have done these things unto you. Yeah, unto thee. I've done these things unto you. So basically, he's teaching us. So therefore, all that try to devour us shall be devoured, and all of our our adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity, shall go into captivity. And they that have tried to spoil us shall be spoiled, shall be our spoil. All that spoil thee, like try to steal everything away from us. Basically, eternal life is what it means. Our goodness, our grace, our glory, our honor, our nobility, because we're the princes, we're the stars. Psalms 82, 6, read it, understand it. Okay. So that have fallen under attack of our adversary, the enemy, which is our flesh, our own flesh. Okay, this thief that only comes to steal, kill, rob, and destroy, right? Uh, so our adversaries, uh, therefore all that try to devour thee shall be devoured, and all thy adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and they that spoil thee shall be spoiled. So we're going to take our flesh captive by being born again in the spirit, by being dwelling and abiding with God who dwells within us because our bodies are the temple of the living God. Once you accept him and bend your knee and give yourself completely over to him, to Jesus Christ. Okay. All thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity, and thee that spoil thee shall be spoiled, and all that prey upon thee I will give you for a prey. Okay. Uh, this hab Oh, this word sin was habitual sin too, and uh, what it takes to purify us is so great that we can't do it ourselves, uh, our hearts and minds, to purify our hearts and minds. Uh, it must be crucified like Christ came. You must crucify your flesh. He showed us what's going on. You must die to your own flesh. So there's that. That's part of the word sin in the verse before. So therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, all thy adversaries. I know I'm reading this over and over because I thought I, I thought I, um, uh, yeah, we cannot make atonement for our own sins and be reconciled back to God. Uh, only Jesus Christ can do that for us. He's the branch. He's the right hand of God reaches out to mankind to save us and lift us up, bring us back home. So there's that. Now verse 17. Uh, wait. And they that pray a time, I'll give for a pray. I will prepare you to be used by me. Now this was in verse 16. I will prepare, I, I believe, but I didn't write down a number of what word it was. Um, anyways, I'll prepare you to be used by me as my witness to all, to all mankind. There's that. Okay, so now verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Okay, so now I'll read verse 17, the way his Holy Spirit led me through it. Okay, so I will nurture you and raise you up as my own. So you will excel in everything that you do and every way that you go. Rousing your souls, awakening your souls, right? Spiritually awakening you. Okay, from this sleep of death that we've taken by taking the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and being birthed into this rotten, dying, decaying physical form by taking on mortality. Okay, so by the renewing of our minds, 
There you go. By the revealing of the light of the truth, by revealing the truth of his word, the light of the truth, the purity of it, the spiritual meaning, okay, of his words, restoring the soundness of your hearts and minds so you can judge soberly, having understanding of our condition, okay, um, stabilizing us on this foundation. And it said like long tent cords, right, stabilize our tent, our bodies, which is our tent, our tabernacle, our temporary dwelling place. We made our home, our dwelling place temporarily while we're here in this world because we all screwed up. Okay. Stabilizing us on the foundation of his word. So I will heal their unsteady minds and hearts. Okay. The worry, the anxiety, the everyday stresses that are common to mankind by showing them, by showing us his favor, giving us his living water to drink in for nourishment and refreshing us daily, making us whole again so that we will no longer feel abandoned and disheartened in a downward position, feeling downtrodden and oppressed, sick and alone. So there's that. So he's with us now being consumed by all the cares of this world. As I am like, this is God speaking as I am the only one who can heal your wounds and stop this carnage. And this was found, I think, in the BBB, I think, to stop this carnage. And the opposite of carnage is peace. That's weird. I didn't know that. But when you look it up, because he had me look up the word carnage, okay, to stop this carnage, this mass slaughter, this butchery that is destroying us from within by giving us peace, by giving us peace in our hearts and minds. This carnage, the carnage of this flesh that has captured and conquered you and subjugated you, subjugated you, uh, which means controls your hearts and minds. That's leading you astray by this disease, this disease of sin, of disobedience to God. Okay. We're like trees that are full of blight. And that's what it said, like a plant uh, uh, that's full of blight, but we're all trees. So this tree that's full of blight, okay. That produces bad fruit, meaning rotten, meaningless, vain works, and even our offspring, because we pass that on to our offspring, our own belief and faith and all that, right? Okay, that will only steal your heart and kill your free will, your own mind, and destroy you. You'll suffer the second death if you allow it to, your own fleshly, carnal nature. Okay, okay, to uh, that is only used to judge and punish you like a plague. It's like a plague. And that was found in the word 5221. I forget what it, what word that was. I didn't write it down, but where I seen this. So your flesh is used to judge you and punish you. It's like a plague. There you go. It's a vexation. It's a curse. It's a punishment. That's what it is. We're not born into life like the churches teach. We're born into death. That's why there's so much evil in this world and depravity and sin and sickness and everything. Okay. So but if you will confess my name, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, okay, who is God incarnate, the word that is made flesh, our Lord, our master, our savior, the Messiah, our Messiah. But if they will confess my name and answer my call, answer his call, he calls us all. He's putting out a proposal like a marriage to join him in this union, okay, to help him in any way that he tells us to. Okay, there it is. But if they will confess my name and answer my call and speak the truth of my words, the spiritual truth that I have given them, okay, by giving ourselves over to him completely, surrendering completely to him, his guidance, his rulership, his leadership, okay, to me, okay, the self who is this, the self-existent, who got that one, little bugger, um, the self-existent, eternal, one true God who came into being as a beacon of light, committed to break the cause of our fall so that we may breathe properly, have the breath of life, this Holy, his Holy Spirit, and be nourished by the living water. The, 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 mm, I, I don't even know how to say it correctly. It, the, the true meaning of the spiritual meaning of his word, this living water that flows from the heart of God, uh, the throne of God, which is his revealing of himself to us, you know, <laughs> man, his throne, the spirit, 
Like, because now he marks and seals us by his Holy Spirit. We've been marked and sealed already by Satan through our flesh because we sold ourselves in sl into slavery through our flesh. He rules us through our flesh. That's what deceives you. That's what leads you astray. It's your own flesh. It's your own body. Okay, but when you're born again in the Spirit, then God seals you and marks you as his own through that gift of his Holy Spirit. Now he dwells within you. He writes his word upon your heart. He's constantly speaking to you. Do you hear his voice? My sheep hear my voice. And he's telling you what to do or not to do, which way to go, what not to go all these things what's right and wrong so you can judge soberly right he convicts you of your own sin and depravity and state and condition it's the holy spirit that dwells within you because your body is the temple of the living god it's supposed to be it should be okay so anyways he nourishes us by this living water because we uh, so now we're we're able to produce good fruit because we're being nourished like a tree a good tree right okay because they answer because we've answered his call and to be his chosen people his a chosen vessel that belongs to him to be employed by him and work for him be one of his witnesses by meeting with him and being with him united to him being summoned by our king by our lord our master being summoned by him uh, from our banishment, from our exile, it said, from our banishment and our exile, so we can return, having our sins forgiven. Okay, uh, basically our slate has been wiped clean by giving ourselves over to him completely. Okay, uh, because this place is a parched, uh, this word Zion, it's a parched place. It's a dry wilderness full of dying trees that are starving for this living water. It's a dry wilderness full of dying trees that I... Uh, was led that we all were led around in lost we were led to we were deceived we took it fruit of the tree of knowledge good evil, birthed into this world okay and we were lost in it like the sheep that were all led astray okay that looked so bright and it promised so much from afar like we we thought we could become by the most high god by coming into it and knowing good and evil so we could rise and we ignorantly set our desires and our heart on it and put our confidence in this world to raise us up so we could be ahead and above the other stars the other princes of heaven okay pride downfall okay but we've all failed mr mark mr goal Okay, that is, but it is full of heathen gods that require blood for worship. It's full of these heathen gods that require blood. For, look at all the wars. Look at all the, the uh, killing of children, of babies, and uh, just everything. And what happened all throughout history, they always killed people and slaughtered people and all that. These, these, it's because this world is full of heathen gods that require blood for worship. Okay, no one should seek after this. They should only worship and consult and inquire of the one true god there it is so that was verse 17 thus saith the lord behold i will bring again the captivity of jacob's tents basically he's saying i will bring again let's see i will lead those who were exiled and taken captive and i will restore them who were supplanted by the, these tents these um temporary dwelling places the bodies of flesh okay uh, I know there's more to this, this body of flesh that took our place, that took first place because we put ourselves number one instead of God, okay, and all the things we desired number one instead of God, all that, right, nothing and no one should come before God period okay these bodies of flesh that took over our minds and our hearts that took first place in our life that represent us and it they did so insidiously that word stood out it's holy spirit made that word stand out these tent it was all found in this word tents 168 when you look it up and all through it supplanter and jacob's tent you know like they took first place in our lives they supplanted us they they took us over and represented us it replaced us you know, it, it, you want to be represented by Christ when you stand in judgment in front of God. You know, you want to be represented by Jesus Christ, who has wiped your slate clean, paid the penalty for your sins. You don't want yourself to represent you. Oh, I, I my good works outweigh my bad works, and I'm a good person. I'll go to heaven. I don't hurt nobody. I haven't committed murder. Right? Wrong. You've already committed murder. You murdered yourself. You, you uh, because of your own ignorance. It's so crazy. Okay. Um, Jacob means supplanted, right? We've been supplanted by this, these tents. Okay. So I'll bring again the captivity. So I'll lead them home 
who were exiled and taken captive and restore them who were supplanted by these bodies of flesh that took first place in their lives that represent us insidiously, insidiously, like uh, evil nature of our flesh that will destroy us and devour us, okay? That was meant for punishment, okay? By God. That's what it was. Okay. And I will have mercy on his dwelling places. Basically, I will shine forth the light of the truth of my word for mercy, making them, making us his temple, his tabernacle. Okay. To abide with us, coming down himself to a divide abide with us, coming down from heaven to abide with us like he did in Jesus Christ to abide with us and through his Holy Spirit who gives us that gift of his Holy Spirit to divide making our, our bodies his temple. Okay. Uh, making us his tabernacle. Okay. And uh, oh, there's some huge words here that were great. And the city shall be builded upon her own heap. This guarded place that has surrounded us okay and taking took us captives that hold us within it right uh that has usurped us okay and it's it's like a throne that has usurped us satan's throne is our flesh his throne is our flesh that's how he rules over us it, and it doesn't mean his fit like a physical throne it, well it is it's physical it's our flesh it's it's um that's how he rules over us, that has usurped us. So I will make this throne that has usurped us, Satan's throne that has usurped us, shall be built it upon our own heap. Okay, um, this guarded place that we've been surrounded by. But it's, where, what word was it? Um, city shall be built it upon her own heap. I will awaken them. Now, th I think this led to this word too, that we've been usurped been usurped by but i will we awaken us spiritually and it goes to 5782 <coughs> and this word oh man it was it, i forget what it, the original word was but it goes to this that has usurped us he will awaken us arouse us for from our sleep of death uh by opening our eyes opening our spiritual eyes of our minds right by the revealing, shining forth the light of the truth of his word, having his mercy moving, moving us by, by dwelling with us, abiding within us, coming down himself to abide within us in our dwelling place, our tabernacle, uh, this dwelling place, 4908. Okay. And this city that has been guarded and surrounded us, that usurped us, took our place, right, of a throne that Satan put over us. Uh, he will awaken us spiritually, opening our eyes, will be builded upon our own heap, and the places shall remain after the manner thereof. Okay, so we can be steady and remain uh, with him and be a member of his kingdom when we physically die or when he catches us up out of here. Okay, now 19. And out of them shall proceed... Man, these mosquitoes are horrible. Okay, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. So we'll rejoice and we'll... And I will multiply them and they shall not be few. Okay, I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. So basically, he... It, the meaning of this, I'll give them a glorified body that will last forever and their witness shall not be insignificant. Okay. Um, and up here, this city, like we're, we're a kingdom that's been divided. We've been besieged and surrounded. Our soul is guarded by this body of flesh that blocks out the light of the truth. Okay. Um, so basically he's going to, by the revealing of the truth and coming down to a by us surrendering, giving ourselves completely over to him. Okay, we win by surrendering to God, to God, the one true God. And putting our faith and trust in his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, our Messiah. Okay, so he will give us this glorified body um, to dwell in as one of his nobles, one of his princes, the princes, the stars of heaven. Okay, um, this body we were besieged, surrounded by this body of flesh that guards our soul and keeps it held captive. It's our prison, dungeon, darkness, surrounded by darkness of our flesh. It's like a dungeon. Okay. I will glorify them and they shall not be salt. So our witnesses shall not be insignificant. So our children also shall be as aforetime and their congregation shall be established before me. And I will punish all that oppress us. Who's oppressing us? The government of this world, the rulers of this world, the corporations, the government, everybody who's 
uh, put the things, the external things of this world and don't understand the spiritual truth or many might and have sold their souls for the riches of this world, basically, which <laughs> ignorant. Okay, their children should also be for them. So as they were from the beginning, my children. From before time. That's the way his Holy Spirit revealed it to me. So as we were from the beginning, God's children. So he's going to restore us as a, his child again. And our congregation, he's going to gather us together and we will be established before him and will and he will punish all that has oppressed us, lied to us, deceived us, concealed the truth from us, and stolen our inheritance of eternal life and are consuming us from within by this covering of flesh. I mean, it's so crazy. It's crazy that mankind rejects it. It's the strong delusion because it's so strong that they, people believe, oh, the image of the beast is CGI or a robot or this or that or hologram, or all these things, television. They're so lost and confused. They, they have no... They don't understand because they 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 they've overstepped the bounds of created being. Uh, they're too full of pride in their own knowledge and understanding uh, that they were taught by their own institutions that they themselves set up set up in this world, um, and uh, they're full of pride and arrogance and presumption, believing something to be true that is not, and um, they just can't see the truth. It's so crazy. So crazy. Only Jesus Christ can reveal the truth to you. Spiritually. Spiritually. So, how did you get all wet? <laughs> My dog's soaked. Yeah, so anyways, I'll give you a little story real quick. Me and my girlfriend, we got this house, right? And we're, everything I touched, like someone, someone who lived here previously, everything they tried to fix or do, they did uh, wrong. Um, they didn't do right. They kind of just chinsed it. So everything I touch has to be redone, but it's not, you know, major. It's just a lot of little things, man. So it takes a lot of work. Anyways, we we're putting in a floor, LVT floor, right? Because the floors were so horrible, it was going to cost way too much to redo them. So we covered them and I did the work. And uh, we, instead of going with something we thought was right and good, we took the advice of someone else. We listened to someone else and we got the cheapest, most, you know, not that it was the cheapest. It wasn't cheap. We paid probably too much for what we got. Basically, we didn't get what we thought, what we were told and promised we were getting. Just like these verses talk about here, right? We thought we were getting something good that would last forever. Did not. And I mean, it was so cheap, so brittle, made in China. Okay. And uh, it was very hard to go together and to stay together, to be gathered together and hold strong together. It was very difficult to uh, lay and lay out right and, and hold together and is so brittle and fragile and weak, okay? Like our bodies, right? Like these physical forms that promise so much from afar, but yet let us astray and they're so feeble, weak and suffering, everything else. Um, you know, we should have just went with what we knew to be right in the beginning, right? And we didn't. Uh, so that's kind of a lesson, you know, spiritual lesson. Um, and I'm not saying the guy was trying to do us a favor. Oh, you can get it cheaper and it's a better product and you, you know, you get a good deal on it and then go into the big stores, right? Box stores like Home Depot and Lowe's and all that, or big flooring outlets. You know, we went to some wholesaler, you know, you get it cheaper, you get a better product, better price. And in, in reality, I promised a lot, but it fell flat. Um, you know, we're stuck with it now for a while, but whatever. It's all good. It looks good. It looks good, but it's, you know, I, I don't think it's going to hold up. I don't think it's going to last, but we'll see. Um, so there's that. So a lesson learned, right? And uh, anyways, so I hope you got something out of that. The whole point is you study God's word, be led by his spirit. You take a deeper look into it, what all these words mean and depend on him to teach you, him to lead you through his word, unroll the scrolls to you. Only Jesus Christ can do that through the gift of his Holy Spirit. Break the seal Satan's put over you through your flesh, you know, your hearts and minds that control your, you know, your carnal nature. Christ breaks through that with his spiritual wisdom, guidance, uh, the love of God, God's mercy, that living water that he nourishes you with, giving you the Holy Spirit. So now you can understand the true meaning of his word and why the world is the way it is, what's going on here, why you're here, what the purpose of this world is, what the purpose of life is, why there's so much pain, suffering, and 
death, disease, and evil in this world. All that, you can understand it. We're not born into life. We're born into death. Um, this is a punishment by God for disobeying him. There's that. And uh, But he's provided us a way to go back home. It's beautiful because he loves us. He wants us to come back home. But it's your own choice. You're going to make that decision. Okay? By what you choose to believe and put your faith and trust in. There it is. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, who is God incarnate, the word that has made flesh, the light of the truth of God's word. Came here as a beacon of light to reveal the truth to us, to break the cause of our fall. Because we fell from above. That's the truth of it. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy. We, your, your existence didn't begin when you're born here. You were stupefied, put in a trance, a sleep of death, spiritual death, separated from God. That's what his word says. It's a punishment. For disobeying him, listening to the voice of another, and taking the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good evil, which is your physical rotten, dying, decaying physical form. Uh, that's withering away because you're a branch that broke off the tree of life, God's heavenly kingdom, and fell to the earth. And now you're separated from the living water and you're rotting, dying, and decaying. There it is. That's true. <laughs> it's true. No doubt about it. When you're born again, you're grafted back into the tree of life through Christ, the main vine, who reached down to mankind, God's right hand reaching down to mankind to raise us up and save us and deliver us and restore us and reconcile our relationship back to God, our Heavenly Father. So when we do physically die or when he decides to catch us up, take us back home, we get to go back home, return home because we're all exiles like they said in so many verses we're exiles foreigners aliens sojourning in a strange land here that he warned us not to come in there it is there's that all right so god bless you love and respect everybody um and have a great day bye